And if you're so thin-skinned, what you doing with that long dress on? That Aunt Jemima thing on your head. <laughs> you can't take that? Naturally, you don't like it, but can't you take it? Suppose they mocked your garment and you smiled at them and said, may God bless you to understand better yes, and kept on walking. They might say, hmm, that's a strange nigga. <laughs> I cussed her and laughed at what she had on and she smiled and told me how nice I looked and she hoped that one day I would understand. You go knock on the door to sell the paper. Get that paper out of there. Shoot you. So. May God bless you. I hope you feel better. <laughs> he behind the door saying, that's a strange response. Yes, he may open the door. Hey, you nigga with the paper. Man, look, I, I, I didn't mean that. I'll I, I take that paper. I just wasn't feeling so good. Thank you, brother. I, I know. I sure hope you feel better. How much is that paper? Just a dollar. Here, here, take two. <laughs> you feel bad. But if you said, what do you mean? Come out from behind that door. I'll show you what a nigga's like. You ain't no redeemer. You're a killer. You're hurting my work. You're not helping me. You're hurting me. Those are my people. Those are my brothers and sisters. I love all of them, no matter what their condition is, because God loves them all. I don't want to see you hurt. I don't want to see you wounded. But you said, you said it, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death is all for Allah. Isn't that what you said? Yes, sir. But did you mean it? Yes, sir. So you can't take a little abuse from your people in their ignorance to redeem them? then the work and the spirit of the God and his Christ is not in you. You have never heard me plot, plan, or say nothing of evil against my enemies who are black. I take on them white ones. But them black ones and sometimes they worse than the white ones. And you know I'm telling the truth. But I just look like I didn't hear it and pray for my own people. Martin Luther King was right. He just practiced nonviolence with the wrong people. Somebody needs to preach nonviolence to black people for black people. We don't need to be violent and destructive of one another. You need to be forgiving and kind and loving toward one another. I hope that today's lecture has helped in some way to make you see that Elijah, Jesus, and Muhammad are one. And the public needs to see Elijah, Jesus, and Muhammad in you. When you sit under this teaching and go out to your people, they should begin to see the birth of these three great men in one in you. 
And if you understand these three, Muhammad, Jesus, and Elijah, and just begin to practice the teachings, you'll find yourself successful in what you attempt to do. Now, don't forget what I said about vision and belief and then righteously working to fulfill your vision. How many of you saw something that you think you would like to possess? Would you raise your hands? You did? How many of you, be, after seeing it, believe that you can achieve it? Let me see your hands. All right. I'm going to give you a little time. Inshallah. I want to see, honest to goodness, how many of you achieve what you saw today. Marsha strength of your mind and your own talent and focus on that object and get it without stealing. Without lying. Uh oh, I blew it then, did that brother had five bags of reefer he was going. So many bags of crack. I said, oh man, fuck, I, you done messed up my stuff. <laughs> no, brothers, sisters, you don't need to do anything illegal to prove God in your life. God said, be, and it is. And he never stole nothing. And he didn't borrow nothing. He just produced it. And you are from him. So if the more you steal, you kill your own creative mind. Don't even think about doing nothing wrong. Think about using the creative power of your mind, your faith in God, and your faith in the ability to bring about what you envision. Try it. Try it. And when you succeed, I wish you'd just let me know. If you don't come to the mosque, drop me a card and just say, I got it. And then move on to the next thing. And when you grow up in this, you begin to see how easy it is to do it. Then you start envisioning what God wants, the establishment of his kingdom on earth. And if we go to work everywhere you look, we take over the schools. We can take them over. They're ours. Our money support them. Our little babies are in them. Let's take it over. They don't know what the hell they're doing. Let's show them what to do. Let's put God's vision in the school. Let the cracker tell you. Uh, God has to, uh, uh, we can't have God in here. When we take it over, God has taken it over. He come in the school in us. Isn't that right? Anytime you sending your child to a school that don't want God in it, we shouldn't want our children in it. If God ain't in it, we should come out of it. And when we go in it, let's bring God with us and establish God in the education. Let's take it over. We can take over our community. We ain't got to go nowhere. We just got to come out of their vision. Come into the vision of God. Thank you for listening and may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Could you be seated for just a minute? I know it's late. Boy, that far gone, Lord. Ishmael, yes, you got to teach me how to do it in five minutes, brother. <laughs> this wonderful son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he's growing so wonderfully, isn't he? 
I'm very proud, man. Very proud. Yeah. Hosanna, Hosanna, my help is come. All praise is due to Allah. How many of you are here today for your first time? Never been to the mosque before. May I see your hands? Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Those of you who are here for your first time, how many of you believe that what you heard taught today, that it is the truth and is good for us as a people? Can I see your hands, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, the last question that I want to ask you is very important because while I was talking to you, another conversation was taking place between you and God. And sometimes when you hear a man speaking and he says things that illuminate the mind, another voice is saying something to you saying, mm, that's right, whoa, this is what I've been looking for. Man, he's right on it. But that's a conversation between you and God. Now, usually when a pastor, preacher, teacher gets finished preaching, he's so happy when he makes an altar call. And if nobody comes, he's all upset. You know what I mean? I don't have anything to do with this part of it. Again, it's between you and God. But I would like to ask all those who are here for your first, second, or third time, who believe that what you heard taught is true. How many of you are ready to accept that truth and become a part of the nation of Islam under the guidance of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and unite with me to help bring about a vision of a whole new world encompassing government, religion, education, science, business, international trade, but all based on the word of God. How many of you think you would like to be a part of that? Would you raise your hands, please? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Sisters and brothers, we want to do this very, very quickly because I did stay a little.